My name is Salim al Haq. I'm a director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development at the Independent University of Bangladesh in Dhaka. And I'm also a senior fellow at the International Institute for Environment and Development, IIED, uh, based in London. And I'm welcoming you to the first of a series of uh, video logs that we will be preparing, myself and my colleagues, uh, over the course of the next few months, which will explain the upcoming Conference of Parties of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change that's going to be held in Paris in December. Uh, so we will be producing a series of these video logs on different aspects of the Paris Agreement. And the unique feature of these video logs will be not just simply explaining what's going to happen in Paris, but also give you the perspective from the perspective of the vulnerable countries. And when I say vulnerable countries, I'm talking primarily about a group of countries called the least developed countries, which are some of the poorest countries in the world, roughly 50 of them, mostly in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, but also the entire continent of Africa uh, and the group of countries that are called the small island developing states um, who uh, negotiate as a group called the Alliance of Small Island States or AOSIS. So these three groups, the small island states, the Africa group, and the least developed countries group, there's an overlap between them because many of the Africa group are also LDCs, constitute about 100 countries out of 195 countries in the UNFCC process. So they're actually a majority of countries. Uh, they're also all part of the developing country group, which is called the group of 77 in China, which actually has 136 members. Uh, but these three, as, the, as I said, these three countries con constitute nearly 100 countries. And therefore, within the G77 in China, they are actually uh, a super majority or two thirds majority. However, in the negotiations, their voices are not necessarily uh, held as strongly or heard as strongly as the other countries, either the rich countries or the large develop developing countries like China, India, Brazil, etc. Uh, so in the negotiations, a lot of what I and my colleagues do is to help the vulnerable countries groups enhance their uh, voices, have common positions so that they can have a collective view on uh, what outcomes they want and then negotiate together to get it. Uh, sometimes they're able to do it, not always, because uh, uh, other countries are much more powerful than them. Uh, but nevertheless, they have strength of numbers, and if they can utilize that strength of numbers, then they can get some things that they want out of the negotiations. So over the course of the next few months, running up to Paris, uh, we will be doing a series of these video logs, uh, each one by a, a different person on a different topic. So my colleague Achala Chandani will do one on the legal aspects and uh, perhaps also on the LDC perspective. We'll get the chair of the LDC group, Giza Martin, from Angola to do one. We'll get the special climate en envoy of the Gambia, Paus Manjarju, who is uh, a previous chair of the LDC group, to do one. Uh, we'll get Ian Fry from Tuvalu, who's a special envoy, climate envoy of Tuvalu, to do one from the small island states. And we'll get Nakmaldin uh, Mohammed, who is the chair of the Africa group, uh, to do one from the perspective of the African uh, continent and Africa group as well, and maybe a few others as well. So uh, hopefully we'll have an entertaining and interesting series of speakers, topics, lead up to Paris, and at the end in Paris we'll do a daily video log which I will record every day on the progress that we make there starting from the 30th of November and ending on the 11th of December.